Well, hello, YouTubers. It's uh, long overdue, but it's finally here. A uh, new series of videos now on Entity Framework, um, especially, uh, more specifically, Entity Framework 5.0, which is the uh, latest release of uh, uh, Microsoft. So let's go ahead and jump uh, and jump right in. I just I'm doing something a little bit different. We're we're doing a little bit of theory first, and then we're going to jump into the practical uh, examples. So. Uh, part number one here is what is Entity Framework and then from the Microsoft website we have this definition. The Entity Framework is an object a relational mapper that enables .NET developers to work with relational data using the main specific objects. It eliminates the need to, uh, for most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. So what I like to do is break that down just to make sure that we understand the definition of uh, Entity Framework. First, first part is this object relational mapper. <clears throat> Excuse me. And looking at the uh, definition of an object relational mapper, it's a programming technique used to convert incompatible types into objects that can be used for programming languages. And so, uh, what that means is that in the um, in the context of a SQL Server and a C Sharp application, you can't access the um, the database and the tables in a in a direct manner, right? Um, so far, if you have seen the other um, the other tutorials. Um, you have to create a connection string to connect to the database and you have to create um, a data adapter and a data set or even uh, tables in memory so you can hold the contents of those uh, of those tables into um, into a C-sharp application so then you can actually work with uh, with the data so that's what they mean by incompatible types so the the uh, SQL Server, it's it's one type, and then you have the, your C Sharp application, and those objects are not compatible. So, uh, the Entity Framework, it's an object uh, object relational mapper, and uh, and so it uh, allows um, those um, those objects inside the uh, the the database to be um, created in a manner where you can work in the C Sharp application. Um, the other one is the domain specific objects. And this is exactly what I was just describing. Um, is is the ability to create tables from a SQL Server inside inside the C# -sharp application into classes, let's say. So let's say that you're working with a, a database that it's actually an accounting system, and you have an invoice table, and a product table, and a vendor table, or views, or uh, functions, or store procedures. You're actually going to create all of those objects inside your C-sharp application. So they're all going to be classes inside your C-sharp application. So you have direct access to them. Okay, And then the last sentence here is that uh, Microsoft claims that eliminates the need for most of the data access, most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. And what it means is that you don't have to create a connection string object and a data adapter and a data set and, and those um, uh, table objects. Um, you're going to work mostly with the uh, domain specific objects and um, and uh, it facilitates quite a bit uh, when it comes to the infrastructure of it. So the Entity Framework actually sits on top of, so you have ADO.NET and you have the Entity Framework right on top of it. It uses the ADO.NET to talk to um, the databases, uh, any type of relational database, uh, by the way. Um, and so it does, it just handles a lot of that infrastructure uh, for you. So now you have uh, you have some options, and the uh, entity framework has a certain type of workflow, and uh, and it works it works in two ways. You can you can have a workflow that starts with a new database, or a workflow a workflow that starts with an existing database. For the new database, you have two options here. You have the model first or the code first. And for a new database, one that doesn't exist yet, that you're going to create from inside your Visual Studio project. Um, you can use the visual tool to design uh, the model with boxes and and simply right clicking and adding the entity adding all the properties um, very much very much like in the manner that you would do it if you're using the designer in the SQL Server actually um, and then you're just creating all your entities and creating associations in the visual to tool um, um, auto generate the classes for you um, it creates the database for you but as, as, as long as you provide a connection string to the to the um, SQL Server database, if you have a direct connection from your Visual Studio to the to the SQL Server, you can actually have uh, Visual Studio create the database for you and all the classes. You can also use code first for new databases, um, and then you're going to define your classes and the mapping all manually in code, and then you're going to use comparison comparison tool to create the database and to evolve the database as well. For existing databases. Um, 
you can use the database first inside the visual tool as well uh, so you go to the visual tool and then you point to the database and then what Visual Studio does it reverse engineer that database and brings all those objects um, into you into uh, Visual Studio and um, creating the model and also it creates all the domain specific classes um, in your project as well and again domain specific classes are going to be all the classes that um, you you already have in your SQL Server so your tables are going to be in there and your functions and your views and everything else um, and you can also do uh, code first as well with the existing databases but you're uh, going to be creating the classes and the mapping manually and uh, and there are uh, tools that are available to reverse engineer um, the code first as well so let's ask uh, uh, a few key questions okay so when you're starting a project first of all you're gonna ask yourself is this a project where I already have a database and I'm doing something with that or is something that I'm gonna create a brand new database and then the second question is what am I more comfortable with do I wanna work with visual tools or or do I like to work with code first um, and again just to uh, talk about what we just spoke about is that under visual tools you have two options one is the model first for new databases and also the database first for existing databases um, in code if you're gonna go um, uh, you, if you're gonna take the code path you're just gonna be writing code manually uh, in creating those objects uh, to interact with either a new database or an existing database so let's get started and uh, I'm gonna uh, do a series of videos now um, the first one is going to be a model first and we're going to create a new database and then uh, now and then after that we're going to tackle the uh, database first where we're going to um, use the um, one of the Microsoft sample databases and we're going to pull the objects from there and then do some changes to it and second then we're going to tackle the uh, code data uh, the code path where we're going to write code uh, for a new database and an existing database so um, hopefully this was not too bad um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you had a little bit of theory behind what we're going to do and especially the first definition what, uh, of what is an entity framework. Um, I think that was really important. So um, I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.